Hello and thanks for watching. My name is Allie Iberly and I am one of the staff contacts for this amendment along with John Hadley. And this is the scoping presentation for Snapper Grouper Amendment 61. Before I dive into the details of this amendment, I wanna go over a little bit about the council. The South Atlantic Council is one of eight regional fishery management councils responsible for managing fisheries in the exclusive economic zone or EEZ, which ranges from three to 200 miles offshore. The South Atlantic Council is responsible for EEZ waters from the North Carolina-Virginia border through the Florida Keys. The council includes recreational and commercial fishermen, state marine agency reps and federal partners, and is made up of 17 members, 13 voting and four non-voting, and has representatives from each state within the region. The council provides management recommendations to NOAA Fisheries, but NOAA Fisheries is the agency ultimately responsible for implementing re regulations. So what is scoping? Scoping is that early step in the amendment development process where the council seeks input on the initial amendment development. The council takes the amendment out to the public and informs them of any management issues that may require regulatory changes. And then in return, the council is looking for the public to inform them of what changes should be considered in that amendment. So for Amendment 61, what is being considered? The council has begun to evaluate the need for federal management for 17 snapper grouper species. Throughout the initial discussions for this amendment, several council members have noted that they do not want most of this group of species to be completely unregulated. The 17 species that are being evaluated for their need of federal management are Atlantic Spadefish, Barjack, Misty Grouper, Queen Snapper, Sand Tilefish, Blackfin Snapper, Banded Rudderfish, Kubera Snapper, White Grunt, Tom Tate, Sailor's Choice, Margate, Jolt Head Porgy, Saucer Eye Porgy, Knobbed Porgy, Scup, and Whitebone Porgy. Some of the species being considered make up all or part of management complexes. This is important because ACLs or annual catch limits are tied to these complexes, and if a species is removed, then the ACL would need to be adjusted. Two of the 17 species are not included in a species complex and have individual ACLs or annual catch limits. Those are Atlantic Spadefish and Barjack, and their ACLs are listed on the screen. The first grouping is the deepwater complex. Four of the six species are being considered for removal. Misty Grouper, Queen Snapper, Sand Tilefish, and Blackfin Snapper. Yellow edge grouper and silk snapper, which have a majority of the ACL for the complex, are not being considered for removal. The chart on the right-hand side of the slide shows the breakdown of the complex ACL in pounds. Remember, these values are catch levels and not landings. The next grouping is the jacks complex. Here, banded rudderfish is being considered for removal, while almaco jack and lesser amberjack are not being considered for removal. Almaco Jack takes up most of the landings for the Jacks complex. For this complex, I did want to note that Amberjack, Greater Amberjack, has its own catch level and is not included in this complex. Next is the Snappers complex. Here, Kubera Snapper is being considered for removal, while Gray Snapper and Lane Snapper will remain in the complex. And for the Snappers complex, Gray Snapper takes up a majority of this catch level. And for this complex, um, some of the more commonly caught snappers like red snapper, mutton snapper, yellow tail, those all have individual catch levels and are not part of this complex. There are two complexes in which all of the species within the complex are being considered for removal. The first is grunts, which includes white grunt, sailor's choice, margate, and tom tate. And then the next is the porgies complex, which includes Jolt head, saucer eye, knobbed, white bone porgy, and scup. The charts on the left show the breakdown of the ACL across the species within the complex. And if all of the species within the complex are removed from federal management, then the complex would no longer exist. So what happens to these 17 species? 
the council has discussed doing uh, one of two things with this set of species. The first is removing some or all of the species from the fishery management unit or FMU. And we'll talk a little bit about what that will entail in the next slide or designating some or all as ecosystem component species or EC species. And we'll get into that a little more in the coming slides. To remove a species from the fishery management unit or FMU, the council needs to consider a set of criteria outlined in the Magnuson-Stevens Act. I'm not gonna read each one, but they're summarized underneath that first bullet point. If the council has evaluated all of these criteria and determined that the species doesn't need federal management and can be removed from the FMU, then what happens? So all existing federal regulations, so possession limits, permit requirements, reporting requirements, ACLs, et cetera, would no longer apply. The states would be able to implement regulations for species that could be extended into federal waters. So remember that's from three to 200 miles offshore if they choose to do so. So that second option that the council was considering for this set of species is designating some or all as ecosystem component species. So what are EC species? They are stocks that a council has determined do not require conservation and management, but desire to list in a fishery management plan or FMP to achieve ecosystem management objectives. If these species are designated as EC species, most federal regulations and management measures such as ACLs, restrictive trip or bag limits, and size limits would be removed in federal waters. Some non-restrictive measures could remain in place such as permitting and reporting requirements, and there could potentially be an aggregate possession limits put in place that are relatively non-restrictive. Amendment 61 currently only has one potential action with several uh, alternatives for that action. The first is no action. So all 17 species would remain in the snapper grouper fishery management unit and species will continue to have annual catch limits or ACLs and monitoring of those ACLs along with any other management measures currently in place. The second option will be to remove those species completely from the fishery management unit, which, like I mentioned, would remove all federal management measures and states would have the ability to implement management that extended into federal waters. The third option is to designate this group of species as ecosystem component species or EC species. The Council has discussed four different tailored options for this EC species designation. The first would designate the species as EC species, but would remove any management measures like catch levels, reporting requirements, or permit requirements. The next option would retain a commercial reporting requirement along with that EC species designation. The third option would, along with that EC species designation, retain a commercial permit requirement for landing them. This would likely need to be developed into a commercial permit that is not limited entry. The last option that the council has discussed would be implementing an aggregate trip limit for this group in conjunction with that EC species designation. However, this would need to be specified per sector and would need to be non-restrictive. One of the things that the council would like to know from you is if there are any other management measures that would be appropriate for these species to accompany that EC species designation that the council has not yet considered. The council has put together some questions to help them further develop the amendment based on public input. The first is, are these species being considered of importance to you or your fishing business, or are they important regionally where you fish? Next, do you think that the species being considered require federal management? And then last, if the species are removed from federal management but remain as ecosystem component species in the snapper grouper FMP, what are your thoughts on maintaining or implementing either a permit requirement, reporting requirements, or a relatively non-restrictive aggregate trip limit? Your comments are crucial for this amendment's development. There are several different ways to provide comment. The first is to use the online form on the Amendment 61 scoping page of the Council's website, which is linked here. Written comments need to be submitted by 5 p.m. on November 14th. 
You can also mail in comments to the address listed or this on the screen or fax them to the number we have provided. If you have any questions during the development of this amendment, you can contact myself or John Hadley and our info is listed there. And it's also on the council's website. You can also provide comment in person or virtually at any council meeting. The next council meeting will be in December in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, and you can find more information on that uh, about that meeting on our website. To wrap us up, I'm going to go over some next steps and tentative timing for this amendment. At the September meeting, the council requested that staff compile an annual report of the commercial landings of current unmanaged and ecosystem component species, which is currently being developed. At their December meeting, the council will be reviewing input from both these scoping hearings and from their snapper grouper advisory panel. The table on the right side of the slide shows the tentative timeline for this amendment. I wanted to note that public hearings, which is the next opportunity for the public to comment on a finalized set of options and the council's preferred option, which they'll be developing between now and uh, when these hearings are planned, are tentatively scheduled for the summer of 2026. And final approval is planned for mid to late 2026. On behalf of the council, thank you so much for tuning in and for providing your comment.